Hey everybody, this is Chad Warren. Today is Thursday, September 5th, 2024, 8.30 a.m. Central Time here in Little Rock, Arkansas, at lovely Vista Park. This is uh, Lake Maumelle where we get our drink... Wait, wait, is that... We get our drinking water from here? Oh, I can't remember. I, I think so. Uh, quite a few people do. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just uh, heating up my second cup of coffee. And uh, we're going to do a market. Mar blah, blah. We're going to do a marketing study. Okay. And what prompted this was this email. That's my email, chad.warren at mailfence.com. It's free and encrypted. Um, I was about to unsubscribe. Yeah, you know, I was just going through my morning email routine. And I'm glad I took a second to read this. So I'm, I'm going to let's, let's give an overview of what we're talking about here. Who, who is this message for? Well, this, this message is really for a general audience in addition to those that are interested in marketing. How so, Chad? Well, because learning about marketing is how we're going to transform how we use social media. Why do we need to do that? Well, we need to do that because it's the difference between social media is a tool. Tools are neutral. If I use a hammer to hit a nail into a board and build a house, that's a good use of the tool, right? If I go around in New York City and hit people in the forehead randomly on the street that's a bad use of the tool <laughs> social media is the same way as it stands the way we use social media is that we are baited into a trap what are you talking about chad Okay, well, who's getting more out of social media? People that turn to it for entertainment and to communicate with people they share an interest with? Or marketers? Marketers, in my opinion, are by far using this tool more correctly. In general, this describes a major problem in our social system which is that public education is a piece of shit as well as whatever education we get from our family friends very whatever community we're a part of meaning that we don't really teach and learn the skills that we need to be happy and successful and, and make our strongest positive contribution in life okay if we did we would see that we need to learn about marketing because if you don't then you're going to be taken advantage of by those who do the worst thing about social media is how it is used on purpose as it was designed to be by the corporate governments, the Luciferian Freemasonic governments that run the world, in, 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 so that we have what we have with politics where everybody, it's just a place to argue. I like that. I don't like that. I hate you. It's just a divide and conquer tool from the top down controllers. And then you have all this terrible alternative media revolving around Trump and politics 
so that you get everybody all emotionally in a tizzy about a very important subject like child sex trafficking, right? And so they made that movie, what was this guy, Tim Ballard, is that his name? Freemason. Uh, t- t- focusing on this issue. This is what Trump and the alt-right is, is, is focusing on. Uh, like there was a headline that 325,000 children have gone missing during this change because of the liberals in the way that the open the border is left wide open and now they let children come in here without parents and the the reasoning is is that they will be given to sponsors but those sponsors are raping those kids up the butt and all this terrible stuff now is all of that attention that is is raised on this topic does any of that actually help the problem you know this has been a tactic if you study the occult and conspiracy and politics and history you will learn that very dark forces have used these techniques since at least the Middle Ages. Of course, this is all ancient, but I mean, that's one period that we know. All of these senators and government representatives are taken to places like the Playboy Mansion and the Jeffrey Epstein Island so that they can be blackmailed. Uh, here, here's you raping a kid, right? Uh, now we own you. It's very simple. Tactic. Very hard to know what to do about any of this stuff. Because there, you know, you watch InfoWars as an example, and I agree with a lot of the topics they discuss, but is that transforming into change? I don't think so. Every, in my, my view, I think marketing is what can solve these political problems and mental health behavioral issues and whatever because way better than any of this government garbage why because the same way that i can advertise a product and say buy it now before it's gone and have a button where you push just like everybody does on amazon i want that i need that push the button it's coming to your house that same model can be used to say i give a crap about stopping child sex trafficking where do i push the button to connect with the group that's doing something about it locally you get my drift okay so marketing can solve social chaos problems by people sharing an interest that they discover online they want to stop child sex trafficking as the example so cooperation needs to replace corporate government now We're also going to learn about what I think is going to be a growing trend. The problem is that I and you are androids just by using these phones. Do you understand that? I watched a video briefly the other day. It was a young man in his 20s, and he was speaking about going to a wilderness retreat, and I think for five days he was there without a cell phone, and he became aware of how addicted we are to cell phones, even though he had a great time without it. And we want the the freedom to be ourselves and use technology to liberate ourselves and others as digital nomads. Why, 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 why can't I have the same love for the ability to travel all around the world that I do for uh, my experience as being a citizen of the state of Arkansas here in the United States? Uh, 
Okay, so then this causes there to be that, that by 2045 is when these scientific experts believe that man and machine will reach a singularity and become a whole new species of transhuman. This is transhumanism. And there's nothing new about this. If you learn about the ancient world, you have uh, Pythagoras who popularized mathematics. And while today we, when we think of math, we may think of like a very rational, materialist, atheist mindset like from the 1800s, like when the, industrial re the last industrial revolution of cars and electricity and all that happened. But, but really, that was a, a, a very spiritual concept. Mathemagic, you could call it. Everything is number. So, when they made coins that had, you know, this is one, one well, we'd say a penny or whatever, uh, or a dollar today, but, you know, what are the Roman coins? You know what I'm saying? Just the idea of ancient history and, and, and coinings. And you hear this phrase that money is the root of all evil. Well, the reason why that's true is because people didn't know it back then and people barely know it today. But by saying that your labor is equivalent to a gold coin or a uh, United States Federal Reserve note dollar, you are agreeing that you are a machine, you are a commodity, a human resource, no different than a, a, a patch of land that is for sale. And so this process of us becoming more machine than man, and not using tools, but being used as tools by tools, is the result of all of that. And, and just whining about technology taking over doesn't help. The book Frankenstein was written to say that if we don't develop spiritually in balance with how we do in terms of technology and material affluence, then we're going to have this out of control slavery, destruction of the human species situation like we have today. So did we learn anything from that? Not really. We talk, right? But again, why I think marketing should be important to everybody is why does the local manager of a Wendy's have this performance metric system. They're constantly looking up at a screen and a sheet of paper that's analyzing how much did you make this day last year. You see what I'm saying? They, have, they know they're moving forward towards a goal. And, and, and the people that run the world today and are changing it and taking it over, They've been working on this plan for thousands of years. All of this apocalypse and Jesus coming back and the Israel. I, I think this is all people doing all this stuff. So what we're going to look at now is a trend that I think is going to explode. And it's going to be based on the idea that I think we all recognize the problem with internet addiction and that this tool is using us more than and we're using it. Everybody's being censored unless you totally agree with the corporate government. And then they're all sitting there waiting for Trump and Elon to save them, which all of that is a, a controlled dialectic. That's what the whole point of the game of chess is. If you see yourself as a piece on the chessboard of life, then you better know 
that you are being played by hidden masters of light and dark. You see? But if you look at the bigger picture, then all of us as pieces on the chessboard of grand strategy and light can be part of that body of the white light good which comes from being conscious which comes from making sacrifices so that your individual self is part of a, a greater body and we're about to see a revolution in offline living reducing our uh, consumption of media and being online because when you when you look let's say uh, you want to write a book I think that you would have a lot better shot at looking at traditional book strategies because there's a lot of people like me that are starting to read more paradoxically because of the popularity of podcasts and alternative media why are those things popular because people don't read as much anymore right but but podcasts are basically a marketing vehicle for creators to make a living The podcast host makes a living by sharing their point of view and bringing on experts to share theirs. The, the, the guest sells books by going on the podcast. So this creates a, a, a ladder of growth. Once, once you get into these topics and study, I happen to be fascinated with this thing that's a big deal in our time which is the uh, occult and conspiracy political alternative media which is connected to the apocalypse which means that the the veil is lifted all these things that were hidden are are being shown and this is all part of this grand chessboard strategy Similar to what it must have been like 2,000 years ago when the Jesus myth became the official religion of Rome. Well, in my opinion, these same people, these Zionists and the Vatican and all this stuff, they are now making this New Age uh, theosophy, self-help, alternative media thing the spiritual revolution of this time. And if you, if you can see through that illusion, just like I was explaining about marketing, then you can use this recognition of this trend to do good, right? But that's going to require actually changing our behavior and cooperating with people, not just consuming media and trusting that Trump and, and, and Alex Jones are going to save everybody. And now we're going to come to this email because this guy is going to explain his story of how, boy, it's hard to do the phone, uh, just looking at media, let alone doing a video while I've got to keep this fire going. That is a perfect exercise about how to balance on and offline so anyway this guy is going to explain how he learned how to research in a traditional way and he made this book to teach other people to do the same so that you can become a better researcher as an individual so that you can become a better writer that better content creator of any kind We'll just, go, we'll just go with that, and I'll read this. From Scott P. Shepard, Mission Viejo, California, Wednesday, 8.59 a.m. 
Dear friend, okay, so also this is a study about email marketing. So that in itself is an older style of marketing, yet it's extremely effective. So it's kind of similar to you ever go into a business and they have these computers that have the green screen from like the 1980s and you're like, what in the hell are they doing with all this old stuff? You ever notice that people that are very learned within academia you know do their best to like use a typewriter and write and not keep up with what's on netflix and all this kind of stuff and that these tech people don't let their kids be born with cell phones glued to their face I am writing this to you from the delivery room. That's right. I am in the delivery room, and I'm about to meet my firstborn child, my son, Fitzgerald Scott Shepard, a.k.a. Fitzy. I have written about the theme that is present in the hero's journey, and that theme revolves around rebirth. That is giving birth to a new person and a new identity. However, one of the greatest gifts in life is the birth of something new. Be right back, gotta get a lighter. And in just a few hours, I will be experiencing perhaps the greatest gift that life has to offer. It is in this moment and in this quietude, interesting word, with my wife now in a calm, peaceful position, leaning on her side, that I have a moment to reflect and write to you. I look forward to soon sharing photos of my new baby boy. Notice the value of this is when's the last time uh, you wrote a letter or received a letter? This is like that. It's personal. And another thing... You know, people talk about artificial intelligence taking over. Again, writing, learning to read and write. That's when artificial intelligence took over. That's what distinguishes humans from the other animals, is that we experience the world through our mind. And these senses are not, you're only getting... A small portion of what is coming in through your eyes, your nose, your ears, and the rest of your senses. Did you know that? It's a, it's a fascinating study that literally my perception of reality is much more based on projection. So... Like I was saying about marketing on social media and how the marketers are getting more out of that than than the users. Well, that that was true back when people learned how to read and write. That the reason why people were taught to read and write, the Enlightenment concept was that it say you're a lord. In Europe you know you know, like the Medici's the the beginnings of the middle class the merchant class the idea was that you are going to be stronger as a king or a lord based on the resources that you control but those resources aren't just farms and military in, in other resources, it's it's the human resources. So if you make people more productive, see that's where the whole capitalist system came from. And that's what ended up with America. And then ever since then, it's all been about retarding that back into slavery, into communism. I look forward to soon sharing photos of my new baby boy, but first I would like to say something to you. You see, not more than two years ago, I found myself moving from San Diego to Orange County. I was 37 years old and I hit a low point in my life. Many of you do not know this, but 
I actually moved in with my parents Ooh, at 37. I was a 37 year old down on his luck and looking to turn his life around. I kept my head down and I wrote a book that changed my life which is my Antinet Zettelkasten book. I built that book on a unique foundation. I built that book on a business model. that is not often used in this day and age. That business model slowly but surely turned my life around. I soon thereafter met my wife who was next to me about to give birth to our son. After meeting my wife, my business grew and grew. Why did it grow? My business grew because I built it around analog publishing and not the broken Amazon digital Kindle publishing model. You would think that writing a book in a teeny tiny niche about Antinet Zettelkasten would not make a sustainable living, especially when you see the results of most sales that people have on Amazon Kindle publishing. I can. T I think a part of where this is going to go is what I notice is that you stop trying to speak to the largest number of people online because now being online is is really merging augmented reality with offline and and it's all going back to organic one on one growth. You know, just like you would invite people into your office or your living room. We're all going to be using te video conference technology to create virtual spaces. Facebook is similar to the mall when I was a kid in the 80s. It's a corporate fake community, but it's a good place to go to see hot chicks and what's the new products out and find your friends. And then you leave Facebook and you go do stuff in the real world. That's how we fix how it's social media. However, with the unique business model that I have leveraged and built, my tiny little knowledge business has compounded and grown such that I now make over $400,000 a month. With digital marketing, you can find exactly the person that you need to find. So you don't need to, yeah, you want to have a sales funnel and, and, and have a broad entry like I've this is for a general audience. It's also for people that are into marketing. But I mean, ultimately, you can find exactly who you need to find. So to not use this tool is retarded. Whether you're a plumber that needs to find new business or you have moved to a city and you need to find your people. It makes over $400,000 a month out of town I would like to teach you this business model that turned my life around that took me from a hapless 37 year old living with his parents to someone who is making a fantastic living in just one year in nine months all I have to do is write one thing a month the start of this all revolves around writing a book now that may sound difficult but it's actually not keeping this fire going is difficult and I don't know what the deal is it's like all of a sudden this past week or so I've been experiencing this <laughs> the minimum size of book that you want to write is actually 64 pages I would like to teach you my entire process in fact I would like to personally help you write launch and monetize this business model I will work with you such that you are making a thousand dollars a month in additional revenue guaranteed how can you guarantee that and I will not stop working with you until we get there after I get you there I will then give you the entire playbook for scaling to twenty thousand dollars per month
and beyond, which leads me to that, to what I would like to teach you. If you haven't done so already, I highly recommend you watch this detailed 44-minute video I made on Right to Freedom. It teaches you everything you need to know about the best business model out there for independent writers, creators, and thinkers. Whether you're someone that's trying to make $10,000 a month from your writing, or if you are a coach, consultant, entrepreneur, business owner, and you want to unlock an insane amount of clients, ones that flock to your business every single month such that you can scale your income to over $100,000 a month like me, then do yourself a favor and watch this video below. Here's the video. After you watch it, we can have a friendly, casual discussion and talk about any questions you have. If it's a fit, great. If not, great. But at least you've been educated about the best business model out there for independent writers, creators, and thinkers. How would you like to explain and educate somebody, the right somebody, about whatever it is that you care about so that they take action and help you by buying a product or service or participating in an action and you help them this is how we're going to do it is learn in marketing please note i only have a few spots available therefore i highly recommend that you watch this video as soon as possible while there are still openings press on and always remember to stay crispy my friend I wonder what that means crispy okay let's take a little little peek at the book which I haven't really started reading. I'm reading this other book, My Path Lit by Lightning, written by, oh, David, oh, Manness or something like that. And it's about Jim Thorpe, the Sack and Fox uh, Native American who represented the excitement that the United States government had to demonstrate that they could eliminate the Indian culture and integrate these people into American culture through through special schooling indoctrination centers you know taught to become like us and uh, how this uh, backfired for Jim Thorpe as, as well as all of America during the 1912 Olympics he, he won the pentathlon and decathlon but there was a controversy because he played minor league baseball in the summer while he was attending this school you're supposed to be an amateur to participate in the Olympics and my conspiracy alarm goes off and says I'm sure just like the 2024 Olympics is all this Luciferian propaganda about making the world go woke and whatever that the reason that was all staged like wrestling to put America in its place you know they want they wanted America to dr make every the rest of the world change to act like America because it was shown as a success, but they also wanted to show all oh, the Americans are too young. You see, they can't they can't properly integrate a, a, a Native American into their culture without degrading and uh, being corrupt now here's the book a knowledge system that will turn you into a prolific reader researcher and writer I uh, have always wanted to write and uh, really haven't done a lot toward that other than you know blog posts and whatever 
And then I have this complaint that alternative media, while it's fascinating to learn about the occult and Kabbalah and how Twin Peaks, you know, represents this grand opus about the importance of the occult, especially within the American story. How do you really utilize that information to make your life better on a daily basis, to, to have a spiritual life that you prefer compared to the religious Christian world that I grew up in, that kind of a thing. But it was a B. D. Salerno who wrote a book called Oh what is it called? Let me Here it is, Exploring Forensic Astrology, The Secrets, that sucks, you can't do that, you can't look at the title, Exploring Forensic Astrology, so it, 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 it shows the stories of high profile murder cases like with celebrities and different things that illustrate how you can say here's the astrology of these people here's the astrology chart for the event of the murder he, so there's a logic as to why that happens not and not just something that you can look back in the past but you can look to the future and say should I marry this person uh, is there a likelihood that some violence could occur between these two people it's fascinating. So it answers the problem of w what of this is applicable. So that's where my journey to want to write and to do what I'm doing right now, which is even though I haven't been successful with marketing, I think I understand a lot of the concept, the theory of it well. And marketing is definitely using the same concepts that work in magic when you when you see a can of Gatorade and it has a lightning bolt on there well that lightning bolt subconsciously your mind recognizes natural power it thinks of Thor uh, and, and, and your subconscious is like if you drink this you're gonna have the power of the gods now that sounds silly right to your conscious mind but it doesn't to your unconscious mind and 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 that's why the luciferians uh the masons is one a branch of that you know they they make the american flag with the stars and all this all that stuff means stuff and it all has an effect on our subconscious okay so Once you learn that we experience life through our mind and our heart way before the material world is involved, then you see the value of writing. Because you're, you're programming yourself instead of being programmed by programs, television programs. And so we've got the old card catalog here. You see what I'm saying? That's what you learn from the occult is, oh, these people, you know, these Renaissance men, they're the ones that discovered encryption and cryptography that is used with cryptocurrency and two-party, two you know, uh, authorization where you get the code on your phone. Okay, this is Chad and we've sent the code and all this kind of stuff. I haven't even really looked at this myself yet. Like I said, I'm still reading that other book. The journey that led me to publish a book on the anti-net, the who and why of the anti-net, 
Oh, just yesterday I picked up my son and I picked up a National Geographic all about the medieval times. It's just like ridiculous. It's like, this is so much better. It's so much bigger than my phone or tablet. It doesn't turn off. It doesn't buzz. You see what I'm saying? Now everybody's like, yeah, we know about this internet. They've got us hooked in here. And at first it was a wild west. And now it's like a police state of um, watching everything we do. And now everybody's like, yeah, how about screw that? How about let's just go back to VHS tapes and all this jazz? The who and why of the anti-net, the current Zettelkasten landscape. We'll have to d define Zettelkasten. I don't know German. I think that's what that is. Chapter 4, Nicholas Luhmann, the man. The anti-net. What is it? <laughs> Analog. Numeric alpha. Tree. Index. Network. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Anti-net. Knowledge Development. Chapter 12, Knowledge Development, 13, Selection, Extraction, Creation, Installation, The Nature of the Antinet, Mindset, Communication with Your Second Mind, Human Memory in the Antinet. Speaking of the connection between past and future in, in today's technology, uh, have you fooled with cryptocurrency to the point that you had to absolutely ridiculous how much trouble it is for me to get this lit that you had to get a uh, 12 word security phrase that you had to write down on a piece of paper this is so hilarious to me right okay I, cryptocurrency seems like garbage to me it seems like yeah you can make money on the short term on it at all but I don't see how in the world that people can look at that and go, I trust this more than the dollar or uh, gold. It, it, especially all this Donald Trump freedom movement embracing it. Because it seems obvious that nobody knows anything about this technology. Uh, how in the world are you going to keep that private? How can I trust that that money is not going to be taken away? We have so many examples to where governments have confiscated Bitcoin and all this stuff. So, uh, I mean, I'm certainly excited. Bitcoin is supposed to be digital gold. Certainly a, an exciting concept. And w as I personally got involved with precious metals... I noticed a few things. A, it is very anxious making to have a whole bunch of precious metals in your home that, you know, literally my ex-wife like tried to steal some of it, right? So the people closest to you are going to learn. You don't ever want to tell them about it, right? And uh, your, your domicile can become a target to thieves. Uh, and then you got to find somebody you trust that it, to exchange it with so it, through that process it, it made me appreciate what I thought was just only bad like when you learn about the US dollar and you go well there's nothing back in it anymore this is fiat it only has value because of the power of the American military which all of that's gone now we lost all of that, which is all according to plan. So, it's like if, if you, whether you are making a relationship in the real world with, with your uh, children, with your friends and family and community, you want people to know you, to like you, and trust you. That's the whole point of marketing, okay? It's to establish a relationship and, and, and make a sale. Make something happen. So. Trusting that the dollar is worth something. You can take it somewhere and somebody's going to give you a good in exchange for it. It's just the same as trusting a person. I can trust this person that they're going to do what they say. I'll help them. They'll help me. It's no difference. All right, so we have a taste of that. Let's 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 listen read here.
During the year I wrote this book, every day I woke up and deliberately chose faith over fear. I had recently come off a lucrative venture where I co-founded a cryptocurrency. It's funny. I quit that venture in not the most pleasant fashion. My friends and family expected me to start a new, bigger and better cryptocurrency. The stage was set for me to get back at my old business partners who I had a falling out with. And there I was assembling boxes of note cards and writing about it. There I was dedicating my life to a thing that flies over the heads of most people. There was no clear path to recouping my time spent exploring the system you're about to learn in this book, yet I chose faith. There's something here, I told myself. There's something that is bigger than a mere box of note cards. After reading this book, I know you'll find this to be true. On that note, I was watching um, Something Wicked This Way Comes, the early 80s Disney uh production of a movie based on the Ray Bradbury story and, and Jason Robards wonderful actor uh, plays the character I don't remember his name but he's the man who is very wealthy but he is older and has a weak heart and he has a young son so he feels inadequate but good lord he I don't know does he own the public library or does he just work there? But this building in the gorgeousity of marble, white marble, columns, multiple levels, wrought iron railing, and, and the guy's son and his best friend coming in from school and the dad being like, well, what do you want to read today? Arabian Night? Good Lord. That's, I think, I know, because uh, I, I, I took my son, uh, me being some, you know, homeless person that lives in my car, have depended, is it, so I'm a libertarian type of person, uh, I can't stand all this woke garbage, but, you know, I like public parks, I like public libraries, and that kind of a thing. The old, old school notion of you have to give, give to the community in order to increase the value of the community by increasing the quality of, of life for the citizens, which increases their economic output and contribution to society. So, man, I love libraries. And I was thinking yesterday after watching that movie, what if we had private libraries? What if every neighborhood had a, a house and we just said, let's just all have a private membership. To, we'll buy this property and, and, and we can make that a multi-use community facility that we privately run, right? Because the public libraries were all put there by the Carnegie's, you know, the steel magnates just like we were all given access to the internet by these rich people. And that's this tactic where they get everybody in and then they take away the freebies and they degrade the quality. So that now it's, it's basically a homeless uh, facility. Same as McDonald's, right? First it starts off, they're selling hamburgers for cheap to families in the Leave It to Beaver 50s. Now what is a McDonald's today? Some kind of communist uh, homeless facility. And I, 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 you know, love and depend on those places as somebody that is homeless. But, but I don't appreciate the fact that Bill Gates, you know, is putting poison in the, the meat. And that's another reason why they're making it attractive to poor people to be there to kill people. It's horrible. This book is for those who value the intellectual pursuit in life. 
It's for those who wish to unlock their inner genius so that they can contribute something to the world. It's for those committed to growth and learning. My, my, it, my reaction is that I have been a very angry, grumpy man because I inherited money. I, I thought that I, I, things would be easy for me. I thought that I would be able to uh, be happy and, and have a wife and family and, and be a very productive member of society because I was told how, oh, you're smart. And, you know, you, you should be a writer and you should do all this. And I haven't been able to do anything with that, so it's very frustrating. So I hope that uh, I'm speaking to somebody that shares that terrible experience and wants to help each other out to make use of the gifts that Father Creator and Mother Nature has given us. That was what inspired me again about B.D. Salerno. She felt that she had not done a lot in her life. And through a traumatic experience, which is the power of the dark side, uh, is that all this positivity comes from these terrible experiences. So I, I hope I, that happens for me and you. So I'll just shut up right now, and I will just ask you, please give me uh, feedback. What did you think about this presentation? This was all fairly off the cuff. I just, boom. As soon as I was inspired by reading the email, that's why I went. So I'm sure it's probably way too long-winded. But that's okay, because again, I'm looking just for one person. You know, when they say, we've only got a few spots. Well, the truth of that is that anybody that's doing sales is looking for one person at a time. They should be. Because Nothing that you do with money, nothing that you do with technology is going to improve on the basic truths of life. All we're doing is taking ancient human behaviors and turning that into an industry and into a living. So, what do you think about cooperating as a community so that we show each other that we are following the performance metrics like the manager of Wendy's. We're not just talking about stuff, but we're able to use psychology and marketing and technology to track our progress in a positive direction. Just like marketers are tracking our behavior so they can take advantage of it. We need to take advantage of ourselves and each other by uh, facing what is the zeitgeist, the thing that is going on in our time. And it's that the problem is you have all these individuals doing whatever they want to do because we're isolated on the phones. But you're just going to be used unless you learn how to cooperate and find all these other people that are like you so we don't want this is Trump and Alex Jones the old school male dominant leadership system of the master and you're the slave the Lord no 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 no. now we need the feminine energy of nature and of cooperation where we're able to pivot on a dime to whatever is the next best thing to do we're gonna assemble masterminds where we have people that have different skill sets and learning to cooperate and work as a group, not a collective, not communism, not, oh, we all want freebies and our house is paid for. But how can we balance what I want with what others want and, and run everything like a business transaction? We're going to have to negotiate, communicate, cooperate, etc. Thank you very much. And please uh, find me in what I am doing over at Linktree. I will put a link in the description. 
You can help me by buying anything that you normally would through Amazon through that link. That's Amazon Associates. It's free. I can show you how to do that. I've got a blog on Medium. I have a book club uh, for the Hot Springs, Central Arkansas area to meet in person as well as anybody anywhere in the world that wants to uh, read that uh, Path Lit by Lightning uh, with me. And uh, you can see my appearance on The Mental Breakthrough, talking about Gnosticism and networking. Uh, to take action as I've described here. You can uh, learn more about uh, places that I highly value uh, to visit in the central Arkansas area through my Go Google Maps local guides reviews. If you have a podcast you want me to check out and make a review for, I have a Facebook group for that. You could buy me a coffee. Did I provide value to you here? Did you enjoy this? Is this something that you go, hey, this, this differentiates Chad uh, from these other people. This experience I'm having here is, is I recognize that it's valuable. Let's throw him a little money to show that he's on the right track. Buy me a coffee. Uh, if you are in the central Arkansas area and you would like me to uh, learn more about what you're doing as a business, I have a promo crafters group on Facebook. If you want to check out my favorite music on Spotify, and again, the world of being a digital influencer, you need to find a thousand fans, right? So you can make a, a playlist on Spotify. And if you get a thousand people on that playlist, you can be, that's a monetizable. And it, it's just like, what a great way to meet people that share your values with the music that you love. I also uh, do reviews of the books I've read there at Goodreads, and all my social links are at the bottom. Thank you and good day.